Before we move into the specifics in terms of the reproductive organs, I want to start a discussion in terms of the terminology sex and gender. And you've probably heard both of these, you've probably heard both of these used interchangeably, and that's not really accurate. So we're going to talk about the differences there and why we're going to use the term sex when we're discussing these reproductive organs. So the reason that we're going to use the terminology sex in this discussion is because this is really described by what we refer to as biological sex or biological characteristics. And so let's think of some biological characteristics that would describe or uh, give an indication of the sex of an individual. So one thing that we can think of right off the bat is an individual's phenotype. And that includes not only you know, what their hair looks like, what their eyes look like, um, the size of their body, but also in terms of the actual specifics of which organs this individual has. Another thing that you can look at is gamete size difference. So think about what a gamete is. We're going to have the testes and we're going to have ovaries. And that will differ between individuals. Also, you're going to have chromosomal differences. So a lot of times we think of the XX and the XY. That's a sad little Y right there. But also, individuals can have different, uh, different organizations here. You can have an XXX, an XXY. So there's not just this binary in terms of the chromosomes. Excuse me, when I was saying gametes here, I meant gonads. Um, gametes, when we think about that, that's going to be the oocyte or the spermatozoa or the sperm. Now, while biological characteristics may lead to a gender identification, it certainly is not always the case. And when we're talking about gender, it's really split into who is going to give this gender, gender identification. First, we're going to have what's referred to as a societal identification. And a lot of times that is based on behaviors of the individual, um, roles that are often typically thought of as more masculine or more feminine, and then obviously physical characteristics are going to play a role as well. Another type of gender identification is what an individual identifies as. So this is the personal identification. And oftentimes they're they can identify themselves as either cisgender, so male or female, or transgender. And this is what the individual personally identifies as, and in terms of whether that matches up with the societal identification or the biological sex, there is a lot of variation there. So I really welcome uh, a respectful discussion in the discussion boards uh, if there is any confusion in terms of that. In terms of this course, we're really going to focus on those biological characteristics. And we will be using the terminology male and female in terms of where that falls within the variation spectrum. But continue this discussion in the discussion boards, and I would be glad to, to chime in as well, because this is a really important area to discuss.